from experience, those who paint, and I watch another, those who paint in watercolors tend to make everything too light. There's not enough uh, strength, not enough, um, not enough pigment, I uh, would say. They're just too light. Everything is too transparent. That's particular for people who uh, work with the uh, watercolor. And uh, that affects their work with egg temper. But it's not so bad. But for those who work typically with acrylic and oils, it is much more difficult to transfer skills and to try egg temper. So those who do drawings and um, water-based medium, that it, it is much easier to understand and to feel the medium. That's my personal experience. Okay. So today we will continue. So in case if you see that your white highlights are too light, too transparent, you can always paint over them again. Okay, so what I would like to do today is to uh, to show my elements that how I introduced the ideas of there's uh, the sun and the moon and I worked with metal leaf with artificial gold and silver leaf also they're all artificial in this class as well as um stars I also to do would like to do a little bit more shading uh, to add dimensional three-dimensional aspect to the plants and if you also okay well i have too much light here coming and the uh, corners ornaments which is not typical that i explain in the class but since we have time i would like to show how i uh, create the small ornaments to fill the corners and my so first of all i would uh, do a little bit of shading on the with medium-sized brush and just to give it a uh, on the plants and the plants is, is specific so i move it forward i will use a little bit of watercolor a green watercolor light Uh, just uh, as little water as possible, just enough to uh, shade and egg emulsion. I just remove excess paper. So what I do, I will probably show, providing this is like more like in depth, I can shade slightly here from the bottom up. If you, this is another element. If you think, if you feel that your highlights are too bright, too white, that's what I mentioned in the last, uh, last class, that if you, it is always possible to make something darker, but difficult to make something lighter. So if you, if you feel they're too bright, I, I, for example, I think they're too bright. They draw too much attention. What I do with a, sh with a glazing shading, I like it and just very slightly apply it on top on my highlights just to soften it to effect yeah again and on this one just to do not overdo it because of the paint the paint is that you're using it, for, especially with watercolor and egg emulsion, is moist. It's not. It's not a dry brush. That you need to be very careful. Secondly, when with white in particular, a white is a very strong color, and if you uh, brush it on this color, it's very easy to smudge and drag 
is white over the entire surface. We need to be very careful. The very slight movement, like, like a feather. Okay. And now we have to end a little bit on this one. Okay. In the direction of the. Not like this. So, in case I dilute my white pigment too much, even if it was a week ago, I will extend it in the direction where it follows, following the direction. So not like this. And on this one, on this side, if I do the same, I would like to make this area in the middle, like the rib, a little bit darker, so I can make a slight movement up in the middle. It's very subtle. But the eye is sensitive to the subtle colors. And that will be, and it will be enough to give it enough indication that part in the middle is, leave it in the shade, it's further away from us. That's, I'm creating the illusion. It's a little bit here. In the middle, just in the middle, and leave it on the white, slightly touching the white. So, if you feel like you need to do it again later, you can do it later, but just a minute to just let it dry before uh, applying again. An hour, maybe a couple hours. A similar element, similar, a similar, could be done on the flowers as well. For example, I am looking for flowers that I. You mean like uh, right now my flowers appear that they are completely flat, pressed to the surface, but I would like to add a little bit effect of dimensional effect. So I, what I would like, I would like to make this inner, like the, the center of the flower, a little bit darker. And that will optically make it, push it back to the background. Yes, I know that uh, those three flowers are they're orange, so I will just use a little bit of orange color, my watercolor. An egg emulsion, as usual. That's all, all this could be done with pigments. However, what I found pigments are grainy. And we need such a small amount of this, of this color that it just just easy to use a little bit of watercolor. That's my flower, and I very light movement, and I start again, and I'm very careful. I wipe my brush, I may make sure that no moisture, and I very slightly up from the middle, and applying shading like this. And the same on this flower. So the middle. From the center to the periphery. Also, if you if you think that's too bright, what I can suggest, you can add just another color. Like for example, the center of the flower. I will use a little bit of red to change the color I mean and orange the same orange just 
Maybe the uh, center of the flower. And this one as well. It's very light. Yeah, some flowers can work uh, work like this. Also, this flower. Uh, the flowers, for for example, the flowers that are as if they these are facing us, but some flowers are facing. We see them in a profile. I have a little bit of look, looking at this flower. sideways and I have this orange color and I can do the same slightly from the bottom up, up, up. so another uh, trick so if you if you think that uh, your application you applied too much that is color too much shading and there's a stronger contrast I don't see it in this is my case but in case if you are working on that and you see it I use just just egg emulsion just egg emulsion no color at all and slightly uh, the end just make sure that you have no drops of water on your brush, like I had. And you can dilute it just with the egg emulsion to soften this transition even more. Okay, uh, for example, here is too bright, and I just soften it. And take it. Um, now with the flowers, they have a, a sideways. For example, this one. I will use that kind of, uh, I used to mostly alizarin crimson. And I have in my watercolor this alizarin crimson. But, uh, and a little bit of egg emulsion. Don't forget for egg emulsion because watercolor, if you apply watercolor just with water, it will. Uh, dilute and r right away it will yeah, smudge your painting here what I do I want to create this recede the background uh, recede it and I slightly brush on at the beginning of this uh, petals where the petals grow like this and I can a little bit down from here the bottom bottom up just slightly on this flower. This and like this. Similar effect uh, could be done even on this flower. This one as well, as it's a uh, lizard in crimson. This one, so 
that's uh, the way you, you can apply whatever flowers when you see and you would like to work on them in this way. Yes, that's the way how you can uh, treat the flowers or any other shapes to add dimensionality. So when are you dimensional, I mean three-dimensional, and even with my icons, I paint that way. I uh, like a fold of the cloth uh, garments. I paint all the highlights, all the mid-tones in the shade. And then I apply shading on top. The idea is that folds, whatever the object, uh, three-dimensional object, they still have their shapes. But they're, because of less light, we, uh, there is less contrast in the shade because they are further away from us and less light. Okay, so what I, uh, I remember you asked about how I create all those uh, indication of the tree trunk, how I, uh, I created ornament, ornament that uh, symbolic representation of the bark, which is normally I don't show in my, uh, this uh, classes, it's quite complicated, but I will show um, uh, this because we talked about it. And I will also show, will show the tree, the first, the very first tree of life that I painted. Okay, so that, this is the very first tree of life that I painted and I had this idea. Here it is. It's also eight by 10. And it was a complete, complete experiment. I, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just kept on experimenting on my own. I didn't have an instructor at that time. So that, uh, that where I created, I didn't know. First I applied what I, we did in the class with the uh, idea of different shading, different uh, creating marble effect on my bark uh, tree. But it seemed empty, it, something was missing. And then I was looking at various illuminated manuscripts. They, I always find inspiration in them, especially when it comes to ornaments. And uh, okay. I, and the idea was, okay, there's something interesting. Why, why don't I create some ornaments on the trunk that shows as a bark with some in you know what i mean like and that that became a, it, it was very successful and i even to create a distinction i even i have different ornaments on two of them again so what i yeah so this idea that came from here. And the idea of this painting being, it was a gift from my, my, my spouse, now a wedding anniversary, which I wanted to create uh, the idea of being together, harmony, which the uh, two tree trunks uh, come together and create the blossom together. And of course, the, the masculine and feminine aspects were presented by the sun and the moon. That's uh, the idea of this image behind it. So in that, uh, that uh, painting, my very first painting, uh, because it was so successful and so many people asked it and even asked me whether I could sell it, I, I, and I couldn't. Uh, created the whole idea of the tree of life that I painted many, many times. And I sold a similar variation, uh, this, yes, I still have a, one big one, but all the small ones were sold very quickly after I created them. Including this one that was a few years ago for the class. I, I painted specifically for the class, this one, the image. And it was sold from like, my first exhibition that I had. Okay, so we will continue We're going back to our, how I create this uh, ornament. 
it's very simple. I know uh, that time of, I created first on paper, of course, I thought about how to create a, that ornament created on paper and I used my um, like a tracing paper to transfer it. But here, because it's so small and I'm uh, feeling much more confident, I created by hand. So the same idea on the trunk as a three-step process. We have the background color, we have mid-tone, and we have highlights. And with this, I will create my uh, mid-tones. And the color I will use, mm, of course, white. And I see which one will work. Mm -hmm. Okay, I remember that was uh, red, red iron oxide. Maybe too strong. I might. I'll try orange iron oxide. Uh, because the color here, we have two colors uh, coming together. Um, we had yellow and and uh, oh no. I think we painted what uh, we painted here. It was orange ochre and uh, burnt sienna. Yes, but I, I will use um, orange oxide because it's uh, because it's much easier to paint the lines. So I'll create this uh, color. I, I'm just mixing, but I don't know what, how it will, whether it will work well or not. I don't know yet. A fine brush, and I will try in some. Small area, not, not the most important area. Just I'm trying just the color. I would probably want it to be a little bit uh, darker, but what I will do, I will show it more con contrast so it, you can see better on the screen. But if it's too bright, too light, like too much white, I will apply this uh, technique of glazing technique to soften it. Because I don't want the, the, the tree trunk to all just the, the most prominent. Okay. And as I let's say, I will just create kind of um, continuous ornament floral pattern uh, abstract. And if you remember, because this is the mid tones, I make them a little bit wider. In a way, they're similar to those ornaments that we have on the, on the top, but I would say like more uh, more lines that represent that um, or, uh, symbolize the tree bark.
just looking for reason the shape I created. Mm. And I will continue this one. Oh, this. It's the indication of the leaf. Um. And I will continue on this. I will I will leave it for now, and I will do it only on one tree, and this one I will I will do just gold highlights a little bit here as I as I start at the beginning. Okay, so I will leave this while we're working on something else to dry, and then I will paint more highlights with with white. This will dry all very quickly. The paint like this dry, it's not puddle, will dry very quickly, especially on a dry day like today. Today we have sun and the paint dries really quickly. So what I would like to do now, let's just to, we're going back to the, our symbolism on the, the sun and the moon. We have to have some tracing paper. Let's see what I can. Okay. And I will place here and very slightly with a pencil what I uh, indicate my the tree trunks. So this is the low branch, the low. And this is probably the end here. So, branches coming, leaves, the low plant. Just um, here I need I need just to know the space where I'm, how far I have to go, how far I can space I can take for my symbolic. my symbols. So with the, with the ruler, I can even check where the middle of the painting. I know that this one, the board, eight inch. Eight inches, so like the middle is probably here, four inches. So, and I will think, looking at this one, I'll locate the sun in this in this position. Here's the, my middle. And now I will work on paper alone.
Okay, here's the middle. I pulled it. This keeps me this uh gives me the sun on this side and I will use uh, the compass or you you can have a template a circle. This is too small, or maybe this one, this side. And I will can I can use this just the perfect circle like this. This one, this in the middle. Now I can see on the other side. Okay, here is my. I want I want them to be symmetrical in relation to the. So that's that's about here. So I can do it's very similar. And maybe I can move it a little bit aside, okay, like this, like creating a crescent. Use two circles. And make a small one. No, actually, I have to make it wider. I make to make a bigger one on the next side. Maybe this is my my moon. Okay, so now back to the with the EPO satisfied with this side. Yeah. Okay. I will go back to my paper to my board. And place it here and view. Okay. You can move it up and down and decide whether to position it. So what I do next, and it's very important, if you have any metal leaf, like a silver or gold, I'm going to use metal leaf. It's not what I'm doing, it's not necessary for um, for your for paint. You can use watercolor or pigment, gold or silver pigment, artificial, and paint on top of it instead of metal leaf. But I will use metal leaf, so I'll show. I use just a regular baby powder that prevents the flakes of metal, metal leaf sticking to the egg temper. Egg temper, it, um, especially if it's real gold leaf, it will stick to egg temper without any glue. Okay. So that's I put here and here. And I will use a brush just to spread the area larger than the regular that I'm going to apply. It. Yes, and then uh, flow the way extra. Now I'm I position my my celestial bodies and will transfer it on on the drawing. When you do this, please uh, do not press too hard because you will scratch your drawing. But with that powder, especially especially here, you can see the powder where I applied, it created a perfect uh, line that gives me an idea where I can apply a leaf. Um, a first glue and then metal leaf. 
make sure of course i i will check with double with a, to make it absolutely correct i will apply all okay here's my circle i want to check it and i can very lightly i will make sure that I, my my circle is perfect and the same with the with the with the moon just the edge. You probably will not be able to see this right, but uh, for me, I see enough to be able to apply glue. I use this Mona Lisa adhesive sites. That's for, for metal leaf. If you can get it, if you an art supply store, they have this uh, gilding kit with a metal, uh, with gold leaf and um, adhesive and a sealer. We'll also need a sealer. And brush, I'm looking for a brush that's not my, not my best brush. And I apply it on top of the paint. There's no, no puddle. Just make sure that you, you smooth it nicely. Back nice. And the same with the moon. And this brush is not the best one because it's not um, it's not pointy enough, so let me. It's good for the circle, but not best for my. Uh, for the edge, for the corners. Brush. After that, I will have to retire up to glue. So it's, it's not so good for painting anyway. Okay, so I will make sure that I have a nice pointy. And with this fine brush, you can also work and work on the edges. The edges are more imp very important when you work with metal leaf. Okay. So. The instructions uh, on the bottle suggest waiting for an hour. I never, with this glue, I never wait for an hour. I always uh, wait when it, when it's, uh, dry when it's when it's not dry by tacky so sticky so right now it's wet so I have to wait for a few for a few at least a few minutes meanwhile when we're waiting I will show something else what I would like to do is on um, maybe the ornaments on the corners like here I always find when I see this, okay, something is missing. I know that I will for this later for the, what I can do with this painting, I can get a frame. That's true, and an eight by 10 is a standard size, typical frame, easy to get. But I, I would like to, to add something here. That's something like this, which is also one of the ornaments. I get it. It will be my corner. And uh, this is my leaf. So that shows how much space I have on this drawing. I probably would like as much space like, like this. If I do this, I will. It's very, it's, it's very small. So I will. Like this. This 
this one, the right one. Um, I'm, I'm very precise in my drawings. I have an architectural background. So everything, I measure everything. Make sure this one is parallel to the edge. 75, oh, three quarters inch, three quarters inch. It's easy to do in centimeters, two and a half, okay. So I make sure that I have a, a good corner. And also I would like at the same time to indicate how far I can go inside, which is assuming that some, a little bit of frame, like a, if you buy a frame, it will take one, one, one eighth of the inch, probably. One eighth. Mm -hmm. Just I uh, suggest one quarter. Quarter. And that will be, is my diagonal. So what I do, all I need to draw, I need to draw only one part of it, and the rest will be, like I said, offset it symmetrically from here to here, and then I flip on the mirror side, and I will do the other side on the drawing. So that, so anything simple. So I'm trying to make something really simple, but the drawing is much smaller. That's too complicated. I will copy the one that exists. It will be easy. And when I transfer, I will just look. Now that I have a preliminary shape, I can use my hand and do a hand, hand drawn quite a bit of when I <laughs> I spend way too much time when I do a real drawings I spend much time looking for the shape that will speak to me that I know that will match my drawing will match the shape will be will match also my hand how my hand draws and I will in this case I always uh, suggest look wait for the shape for the ornament ornament to choose you it's very important to create this natural movement and i and i create a leaf like this okay. so what i do next and i fold it And I can transfer on the other side. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, well, quite often, on one side, I find the shape on the other side. Uh, it looks better. And if on one side, not the original side, but next side, appear it better. Of course, I change this side. Okay. I like this shape. Go on more, and I transfer on this shape, on this side. Just like this. Okay. And now, now I'm happy. Maybe I will create, because in the corner, maybe some smaller element here. So what I do next, I will, of course, I check on my side. Let's touch it. 
mm, 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 getting better a little bit more a little bit more time okay i touch it yeah i know it's perfect just the right size not too close not too far and i'm going to transfer it on my dark color on my uh, on my sky on, on the sky above the in this case i use dry pigment to transfer one of the light car colors like, uh, uh, ochre mm, you can use yeah lighter color ochre or mm, sienna yellow i will use one of my favorite in this case iron oxide yellow iron oxide and I apply it as a like this on the opposite on the other side of the paper. The one that we going to work is transfer, and I just rub it in in on the ornament. That's uh, how I make it also transfer paper for my remove. Remove extra, and also uh, pigments all over the place, and I don't want it to, to appear on your drawing. Make sure to take a napkin and just uh, rub it uh, lightly. And to my drawing, to my painting, I place it on the on the board. And use a pencil to transfer it. Just make sure that you do not do not not do not press too hard. It's very gentle. And please gentle pressure it's enough with you you have color this pigment it's good enough you do not need to scratch the board here i have my here it is here's this one a small ornament here and i hope you can see you can see it. And the same thing you can do with this one, it's easy. You just, you don't need even to flip it on the other side, uh, but you can just turn it this way and that will be your second corner. So one is like this because they're absolutely symmetrical and the other one like this. So and we will use the same paper which I'll probably do later today. And here it is. You can use any color, and but I prefer gold because we have gold leaves here and the gold gold pigment, gold watercolor will, will work really well against this uh, background, uh, dark, dark blue. Since it's pigment, I add my, my egg, egg emulsion. Here's the brush. This fine brush, add egg emulsion. And I will paint it as you I'm probably going to imagine. Uh, the same what we did for our leaves.
desirable to make them uh, symmetrical, of course. So this is approximately what I, what, how I, I paint them with this idea. And this idea is the same on the other side. But I will, um, I will look later today to make it, just to work on the more on the details to make it nicer. So that's what uh, I will finish it later. But that's the idea how I paint flowers. The rest, the rest is just a matter of uh, technical, technical skills. So now we can continue and go back to our, uh, okay, very, very tacky. So by the way, if you can, you can wait an hour. I just don't want to wait an hour. I, once I applied uh, this glue, and I didn't want to apply uh, and I decided to wait next day and I thought, okay, it's dry, I reapplied. On the next day, 24 hours later, I touched again, it was still tacky. So it doesn't <laughs> dry as uh, you can imagine it. Actually, it, it's, it, it's water-based, but it's difficult to get it off your hands once you get it. So I'm very careful not to get it on your hand. So now, And I have a gold leaf, as I said. I have go uh, loose gold leaf. I have with backing paper. And of course I have silver, silver leaf. I think it's something we made from one of my, oh yes, okay, it's nice. Actually, it's nice because it's with a backing paper. That's probably one of them. And I will use it with a, I have this shape and I can use it like this, the shape. And I just place it on top of the, and press it on the top of the glue. Make sure you press it nicely. Yeah. Don't be shy here, it's okay. Use your strengths, especially in the corners, uh, edges. And now I'll check And I lift it. Okay. When you're lifting, please be not, do not pull it like, uh, against because you, it's very easy to remove it. So what I do now with, with this one, when, when you have a, you transferred it, but still you have extra paper. You can press it again. Make sure that uh, the edges, especially the edges, are pressed and glued to. And then I will take a, a dry brush. And slightly and it's almost like and remove it with a dry brush. See? So oh, it's easy to use less powder and they was just uh, got stuck to it. Oh, but well, there wasn't enough powder because it's quite. It's 
very much attached to the surface. So that's why I said using powder, it would have be attached uh, very strongly. It can be get stuck on the surface without, you know, even without the glue. So if that happened to you, and I know there's not enough glue, uh, there's no glue here. I have my stick. It's not a pencil. It's something as a tool that I use, and I help it. More powerful tool than just just a brush. You can clean it in with the hand, and I help to remove it. You can make it with a wooden stick, with a toothpick. Actually. What this is, is a toothpick in an old mechanical pencil. And, and I use it for my, uh, if I use graffito, uh, metal, that I will use it for to remove paint. So now with the same we will do with the moon, oh, with the sun, sorry. I have paper, I have with backing paper, and I have this plain gold, this is loose. So I have this, it comes, it's gold, gold leaf, uh, artificial gold leaf on backing paper. It's easy to work with. And I just uh, take it like this, touch it, and apply it on the to cover everything and a circle that represents uh, the sun. Just gently pull it, pull it away. Okay, as so we have the moon. Of the sun. I will press it again and to use a soft brush. Uh, it's not necessarily soft, but dry brush. Make sure that's a dry brush. Let's remove it. It's clean. That's the uh, how I apply. Metal leaf, but as you can see, it's not perfect, and it's not easy to get it perfect circles uh, every time. So in this case, when it's not perfect, I uh, patch it and to create nice edge with uh, gold and silver paint. To do this, to paint anything at any water-based medium on metal leaf is not easy. It will not, it will not adhere to it. So that's why I use sealer. It comes with the same kit. It's a sealer. The one I have is, is quite old, so it, it starts drying. But since it's water-based, I can dilute it and make it uh, usable again. So I just use the same brush, the fine brush that I, I got from, I used for the glue. I transfer a little bit of this uh, yeah, substance that I, it's getting really thick. And add a little bit of water, so like this. So to make it more fluid and apply it. Apply it 
has a, a small amount on the on the very edge of the moon, uh, the sun, of the sun and the moon. Just on the very the very edge. So make sure that uh, no puddles, just a nice smooth application and it dries clear. And now on the crescent. It dries almost uh, instantly, but I will let it uh, dry for a couple of minutes. So, and I will just show how can uh, I make this uh, neat edges and how I create rays for the sun and the stars. Have a little bit of uh, gold paint left here. I will just continue with it on the sun side. As I said, I would like it to make it. Um, the color is different, so you, you will not get the same color on um, any paint as a gold leaf. Even gold leaf uh, differs from package to package, from manufacturer to manufacturer. But it's easy to patch in this in this way than trying to uh, glue those small pieces. So as I'm creating circumference around this circle. Also, I can see the groove here that I I drew on my. Uh, with a template. Need a little bit more of um, my gold pigment. So what I would like to create is, uh, if you can see on this, on this picture, I have radiating rays of on the on the side radiating from the sun so the center make sure that they when you draw draw them you uh, they are radiating from the center I need to put some indication that's the center and I, I for a few of them, I just use use my bridge as a ruler to make sure that they're that pass through the radiate from the center. So that's a pure indication uh, for the direction. Here. Here. And you can go all, I, I'll just, uh, I'll touch, they touch the plants. And okay, so when I have this indication of my direction, but I uh, use this, my paint, it's probably even I, I dilute it even more. I will dilute more with egg emulsion, so it's easy to to draw the line. And pull on the from the side. Like I draw like kind of dragging like small rays of light. Okay. Starting from from the edge. The 
a different length. Length, just like this. Anyway. So I'm using those, uh, the original one as guide. Guidelines here. So, right. so they all of them radiate from the center. And then I go all around, and I just uh, continue. How many, uh, whatever, it makes you feel better. And just movement, just one. I will do just a few, a few. So. Oh, just to com 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 to complete the picture, I will probably do a little bit, a few more, and I will look at the drawing later, at the painting later. Also, I can use this paint, gold paint, for creating uh, a kind of a, a sparks, a stars that I have a few of them on the use paint. Well, a few, just a few. How I create them easily? I dot in the middle, and I create rays, just slight movement of the brush. Sparks, stars. See one more here. I'll show you in the here it is. And it kind of comes with a with a to the uh, the other side where the uh, sun or uh, the crescent the the moon is located. And I will use just regular. I have powdered pigments as well, but uh, it's not easy to use it as a gold. I have a better. It's easy to manage it. The other one they have silver powder pigment. A bit more difficult, so I will use for uh, uh, this time just Daniel, Daniel Smith's watercolor, silver watercolor. I never use not egg emulsion to dilute it, but a little bit of water. That's a difference between these pigments and watercolor. It just doesn't look right when it's mixed with uh, all those gold and silver paint with mixed with uh, egg emulsion. They create an uh, it's difficult to paint it with it as a wood gold. So I I create just I'll sharpen the edges 
the same thing as with a deer, or a deer with the moon. I create with this paint this outline. A nice pointy uh, edge. shows slight difference, variation in colors between metal leaf and, um, and silver paint, but not much. I, I do not create any rates with this, with a crescent. So <coughs> sorry. you could create, as you can see, I have just the crescent and stars. Night. You can use silver paint very much way the same way as I used a uh, gold paint. I can also on some pa uh, drawings painting like this I use not necessarily silver paint but white paint as well for the stars. Different size, of course, different, like even vary the shape. It's something like this, just show the brush. Fine brush. You can use an even finer brush than this one. Like this. A smaller size. So that basically completes uh, all the main elements of my of our painting. Uh, the only thing I, I remember it now, as you can see, it, is a uh, a little bit of highlights on this uh, tree, on the bark of the tree. I will use now that a uh, couple hours passed, at least hour passed. Since then, I can use a little bit of white color. And it will create uh, highlights. And there is a tree. On that, uh, on the, on the, uh, cloud. Yes. more white powder. This is it's too transparent. Very similar to the highlight that we created on our uh, on our flowers.
even less I used to It's lost. Of course, when the, when the class is over, I will review my it's the entire painting and I will add missing elements and to finish it. But this basically completes uh, our class. So with the tree of life and I, and I that's all the information that I can give. In relation to the tree on this level, the rest, the rest is your creativity, your technical skills, and everything else.